Hey everyone, it's Jason. Welcome to another Final Girl unboxing of the solo horror survival game. Uh, this is Frightmare on Maple Lane, uh, starring Gawker Fright, the Green Gawker, and featuring Maple Lane. So this is clearly a Nightmare on Elm Street portrayal movie. Um, very interesting. It's neat. Uh, like, we'll get a little bit of a story on it, but yeah, it's neat as like, obviously that's what it's supposed to be, but they do take some good liberties to make the story different and unique in itself. So, of course, in this set, uh, your, this is an expansion, you will need the core box to be able to play the game, but then you can always mix and max any expansion. Um, <clears throat> and we have on one side, we had the, the killer board that pops off. Which we'll look at this. We have Dr. Fright and all his stuff. And then on the other side is we have a really cool magnetic box feature. They pop off. We have Maple Lane. And we'll take a look at that when we get to the location. We're going to go over what are all the components. And then we'll hop into the actual stuff. So we will get our brand new two final girls. Uh, Dr. Fright's uh, Dark Powers and uh, Finale cards. His terror deck, which of course will have a symbol in the bottom corner. His special boiler room cards. Then for the, and then of course we'll have our instructions, which we'll get into in a minute. Uh, then for Maple Lane, the location, we will have that with their little symbol. Plus we'll have, again, their terror cards with their symbol in the bottom corner. The setup cards, the event cards. The deck of item cards with their symbol in the bottom corner. Keep them separate from all the rest. A pile of tokens. Actually, a decent number of tokens in this set. Uh, two action... Er, sorry, yeah, two action cards. You get some brand new action cards for this location. Which is always fun. And then the last thing is we will have the two secret envelopes. Which have special item cards for Nancy and Sheila. Which we will look at the end of the video. I will make sure I bring up again when they're coming up. For spoilers for people that don't want to know what they are. Alright. Let's, first of all, let's take a look at what the story is about. Rest in peace on Maple Lane. The suburbs are quiet no more. As dreams have turned to fright in this addition to Final Girl Experience. The Frightmare on Maple Lane, notorious dream doctor, Dr. Fright, is looking for vengeance. He will stop at nothing to make the ones responsible for his untimely death to pay it their blood. Choose either of the included final girls, Nancy or Sheila, and enter the dream world to face your fright. Whether awake or asleep, you'll need to convince your neighbors to let you in their house if you're going to have any hopes of surviving this Frightmare. Uh, very interesting. So... What does our good old doctor do here? So up at the top we have, he starts with 4 horror and he has 9 health. His 2 minor dark powers. Then he has on his board, he has 1, 2, he gets up there, gets up to 3s and 4s for top powers. Lots of additional horrors though. We also says at the top, if asleep, reset the boiler room deck, otherwise you fall asleep. Interesting, so I'll be a new mechanic for him. Let's take a look at that mechanic, the game mode. So we have setup and rules. Uh, we're going to scooch this down just a bit. So we have a little bit of story here for Dr. Frank. Uh, Spring Priest Report, case ID 26006135. I was in some sort of boiler room, and the grotesque man of the pitchfork was chasing me. I was sure it was going to kill me. It felt surreal. He had a pockmarked scars all over his skin and eyes were milky white. A strange black something, maybe a cloud with eyes, swirled behind him. I was terrified, so I turned and ran. I rounded a corner, losing my footing, staggering on some pipes, and they burnt my skin so badly. That's when I woke up. I thought it was all a dream, but I had several burns on my arm from the pipes. Interesting. Zach, you ever want to know more about these guys? They do make, um, I did mention this in another video, but I'm not going to go over it today. They do have the lore and scenario books. So you can always pick these up and they'll have more information about each uh, killer as well as some extra stuff. So they'll have, uh, if I go back here, they'll have a full page here about um, 
Dr. Franklin Wright was an own dream therapist who, who through training of psycho village is able to treat his patients by manipulating their dreams. So yeah, that's a little bit different like story there. Um, you can pick those books up, plus it has different ways to play to kind of play through their featured films or series of movies, which is really cool as well. Alright, now what do we have for special setup? Um, set the game as normal with the following exception. Shuffle the blood room cards, place them face down, then place the awake a sleep card on top of the deck with the awake side face up. This is the boiler room deck. So I want to just take a quick look at that. Let me kind of see what we're talking about because we're going to have a bunch of stuff that are going to mention that. So we have the boiler room deck. It's going to be four cards. Uh, just I'll say boiler room. And if we flip them over, um, it's going to look like we have... Maybe a grid in there for four different spots. And he's kind of popping out of there. And then the same thing, but now he's in that corner. He's one in that corner. And then one in the other corner. So it depends on which corner he might pop into. And then we have the awake card. May not attack or be attacked by Dr. Freik. And then we have the asleep side of it. Boiler room. Victims will not follow you during your movement and cannot be saved. So it'll be an interesting mechanic to look at. Alright, what are our special rules here? We actually have two sets, so let's look at this side first. A sleep and a wake. Uh, when playing as Dr. Frank, there are two important game states to understand. Being awake and being asleep. When you are awake, the game mostly proceeds as normal, but when you are asleep, you enter the boiler room. A terrifying dream world where nothing is as it seems. Your current state is determined by which side of the card is showing. You will start the game awake. Whenever the game affects as you... Fall asleep, take the awake sleeping card, flip it over, uh, and without flipping over, put it on the bottom of the boiler deck, then flip the deck over. If you have done this correctly, the sleep side should be face up on top of the deck. You are now asleep inside the boiler room. Some tarot cards will cause you to fall asleep, but you will want to go to sleep and enter the boiler room by choice. You can just try resolving short rest or long rest action, regardless of the result, by the normal effects of fall asleep. Ever the game effect says to go to sleep without flipping over, put it on the bottom of the boiler, then flip the card. If you've done this, the sleep shade should be on the face side up. So, assuming we start with the boiler side like this, that means we start with the awake side. It says without flipping it over. Put it at the bottom of the boiler star deck. So then we should flip it to the bottom. And then when we flip this over, it's now going to say we're asleep and we're in the boiler room. And then all the cards should be on the front side. Interesting. Um, when you are awake, but not in the boiler room. Uh, you can move, search, save victims, everything else is normal. Dr. Fright is not able to attack you and you're not able to attack him. Dr. Fright resolves a killer action and begins with Final Girl or Victim. Treat it as a victim unless such effect as a dark power allows Dr. Fright to attack you away. Dr. Fright resolves a killer action and begins with a Final Girl. He will still move towards you but cannot attack you if a victim is a space. He ends his moving. He will attack the victim. Interesting. So when you are asleep and, or in the boiler room, you may move around the board to attack Dr. Fright, even search for items. This represents you moving around the dream and perhaps finding, manifesting an item or a weapon. Dr. Fright can now attack you. To resolve all killer actions as normal. Victims will not follow you or nor are you able to save them. You must resolve one boiler room card at the end of the killer phase. Okay. Alright, what does the boiler room do? In order to kill Dr. Fright, you'll have to confront him in the dream world on his turf, his boiler room. No one has ever fought back before, but if you play your cards right, he will soon find out he can be hurt or even killed. To exit the boiler room, shorten to BR from now on, uh, and wake up, you must resolve all the cards in the boiler room deck. You can choose to resolve as many as you wish during the action phase, including none, but you must always resolve one exactly, and exactly one unless the game effect tells you during the killer phase. As such, you'll have some control on how you stay asleep depending on your plans. Okay, so you could choose to do none, and at the end of your turn, you'd have to activate it. So that longest would take four turns. Um, but you could do it in one turn by activating three and then doing the last one. Resolving a BR card is simple. You will slide the deck of cards up, down, left, or right. 
such that half, sometimes quarter, of the next unresolved card is showing. You can not slide it in a direction will not reveal any of the cards and must always be in the direction such as the extent of the previous revealed card. Details on the next page. Thank goodness, because that sounds very confusing. There's an illustration of Dr. Fry visible. On the newly revealed card, he attacks you. It does not matter if he is currently in your space or not. He will be able to reach you within the boiler room from anywhere on the board. Resolving this action, um, choose you attacks. Resolve boiler room card, you'll be able to use your knowledge to possibly avoid future attacks because Dr. Fry will appear in each of the four quadrants once. You will be intelligent. You will be able to intelligently reduce the chances of attacks based on your knowledge. Sometimes you may not get attacked at all, but most times you'll get attacked once or twice. If you successfully exit the boiler room by revealing all four, shuffle them face down, put the sheep wake on the wake sign top. Okay. Interesting. So, let's see how this exactly works. And Nancy starts with four boiler room cards and immediately tucked under the awake asleep. With the car asleep, uh, showing awake she completely covered with no edges showing. Nancy slides the awakened card up, revealing the lower half of the card highlighted in the right example. So, like, number two there. Uh, Dr. Fryzer, she she's not attacked. The main three cards are hidden under where she not see them. Despite the odds being 66% that sliding the top card up again will cause an attack, Nancy has a gut feeling uh, and carefully slides the card up. A second time, making sure only the BR is visible. If she discovers she was right. Not visible, she avoided being attacked twice in a row. Now two foul cards are, are hidden underneath. Nancy knows now by proselytization the last of the cards can be on the Dr. Fright can be on the bottom half. She knows it's sliding up again with causing an attack. If she slides to left to right, she has a 50% chance of avoiding it. So I just slide to the left, revealing half of the card in Dr. Fright attacks. So in number four, now he appears in the bottom corner. Um, knowing the fourth and final card, which is still hitting Dr. Freight, is in the lower left corner, simply slides the card down, uh, revealing only the top quadrant. Okay, you can see it revealed two, then revealed two, then four of them by sliding them up. She's only going to reveal that top corner, um, which is empty. She immediately exits. Yankee shuffles the cards face down and places the awake sleeping on top of there. She's ready to enter the building next time she falls asleep. Interesting. So, um, I wish there was a little bit more context in this. But this is basically how you have to exit is by navigating around in the boiler room. But you still move around the map. You still do all the other stuff, it sounds like, during your turn. Just, um, you have to go to sleep to attack him. So it gives you one to four chances. Maybe you attack him the first round, then you want to exit back out before he hits you. That's, or try to avoid getting hit. Uh, but yeah, you still have to, I think, be on the map in the same area as him to be able to take him out, to attack him, like any normal thing. So while you're asleep, the game board plays exactly the same. You're still moving around. You still have to follow rules of the game board. Um, something's blocked. You can't enter it, things like that. Area got destroyed. You can't do anything there. Following the paths, all that stuff. Just the difference being that... You have to be asleep to be able to attack him, but that also means he has a chance to attack you. Uh, interesting. This also gives you a neat way of, like, you could uh, hopefully avoid to go to sleep as long as you possibly can. You just work on rescuing victims. Uh, but then, depending on what board you're playing, could be more and more challenging. Alright, so we've seen the border boiler room cards. Let's look at Dr. Fright's actual cards himself. So we have his... Finale cards, which are going to show how he's going to attack. So his normal thing is he's going to pick one final girl or the victim and attack. Once he gets uh, flips over, uh, he gets kill two victims. Everyone must die. Two kill victims automatically. You may choose which. If none remain, you lose four health. Ooh, and that's every turn. So he's basically going to end this very quickly. When this card is revealed, remove Dr. Fright from the board and place him on this card. For the remainder of the game, Dr. Fright may be attacked from any space if you are asleep. Alright, so basically if this happens, you can just keep hitting him no matter what. As long as you're asleep, you don't have to worry about being at the same location. Face your fright. Uh, choose one, move and attack. If you are awake, 
When this card is revealed, you fall asleep. While this card is in play, you are asleep for the remainder of the game. Reset the boiler room immediately upon exiting it. Interesting. So then now you can no longer rescue anybody or, uh, can't rescue anything. You still get items and stuff. Uh, and then time to die. She's a final girl. Move, double attack. During upkeep, if you're awake, you lose two health and you fall asleep. Interesting. These are some really neat cards. Uh, cool. Then his dark powers, which are the bottom half. We're going to get the Frightmare is inevitable. Dr. Fright may attack you even if you are awake. Pitchfork Assault. Each time Dr. Fright damages you, gain a horror. Never really dead. Uh, when this card is revealed, place Dr. Fright's Black Final Health token in the reverse Back in a reserve pool and replace with the white final token. Dr. Frey loses less health. Reveal three black final tokens from the reserve and restore his health accordingly. He's just going to keep coming back. Um, yeah. I think it only happens once, though. So I don't think it keeps happening over and over. Uh, then the epic dark power is Shock Factor. Uh, if a victim with panic is killed instead. Three, max three per turn. Interesting. That's kind of a neat one, too. Alright, then we have his terror cards. Alright, so we're going to go... Frankie's coming for you. If there are no victims on the board, draw a terror card. Otherwise, choose a victim... Uh, move cards on stock for Fred's space who is one victim, gain two horror, otherwise it's only one. Better lock the door. Target the final girl move, pick either one, and then attack. During the next action, you may not move to any item spaces occupied by a victim. Interesting. Grab your crucifix. If you have the crucifix, you may discard to ignore the rest of this card. Otherwise, you're going to choose one, move, and attack, and then do it a second time. Better stay up awake. If you are awake, minus one horror during your next action phase. If you are asleep, immediately resolve all remaining boiler room cards. Then choose one, move, and attack. Never sleep again. Horror increase. You fall asleep. If you are already asleep, you may rest, reset the boiler room if you wish. If you do not resolve one additional boiler room at the end of the killer phase. Ew, he's disgusting. Gain two horror. Slash her. Um, target one, attack, and then target one, move, and attack. All victims are not in a item area panic. I'm so sleepy. If you're awake, roll a die. If the result is less than the current horror level, you fall asleep. If you're asleep, resolve a boiler room in card. If you take damage, gain a horror. Then target a victim and move. But if this is a dream, then I can, if you're awake, immediately discard this resolve the next terror card. Otherwise, you may increase Bloodlust by one to choose one of the following. Take the top item of any deck, item card of any deck, move any space you wish, or gain four. Oh, I like that. Um, I mean, granted, it's going to have to be a sweep for it, but I like the fact there's kind of like a semi-positive card in there. That's cool. Board reality. Until the next killer phase, you and Dr. Freight may damage each other even if you are awake. Um, then move. Choose one, move, and attack. Mark for death. Until the next killer phase, all victims of space immediately panic. Target the final girl and move, and then choose one and attack. If Dr. Freight did not attack you, you are awake. You fall asleep. OMG! He's slicing off his own fingers! Choose one and double move. Dr. Freight takes... Damage unless he has only a final health token remaining. If Dr. Fright took damage, up three horror and all the victims in a space pack. That's neat. That's a cool little effect. Uh, but you can't be here. You're dead. Do the following based on how many victims have died. Zero, you fall asleep. One to three, one bloodlust. Four or more, double bloodlust. And choose one, moving attack. Didn't you know they were already dead? If you have not saved any victims or your final girl has been flipped, 
This card is from Zelda Next Terror. Remove one victim from the saved victim space on your final girl card. Oh, because you save someone, but they, like, maybe in the dream world, you save them, but they're dead. Uh, target final, or a victim moving attack. Then we have some minor dark powers. Endless sleep. You fall asleep. Well, this card's on play. You must remain asleep for such the boiler room upon immediately exiting. Oh, that sucks. Um, and then Hellish Pursuit. While well, asleep, you must resolve one additional boiler room card at the end of the killer phase. And what's happening? These should both hit, right? And that would be terrible. Um, crazy. All right. Yeah, that's definitely a neat design for a character. All right, we have our final girls. We're going to start with Nancy, named after Nancy from Nightmare on Elm Street, of course. Four health. She says really low health, but she has gains double health, move two spaces, gain two time, take a long rest action card, or take the planning action card. Interesting. Her ultimate power is each time you lose normal health, you may reveal a final, a black final health token from your general pool and swap with your final black health token if you wish. If you do not remove it from the game. You cannot do this well a white final well with a white final token. Reach additional victim save restore health. This is kinda neat because what you could do is um so you don't know so you don't know what your final health token is gonna be at the time, but you could flip it over if you're like, oh it's blank. Remove it from the game. Now you know you don't have to worry about that. Um and then slowly you could keep doing this and oh I found the one with three hearts, you could take that one. Um, and you can always reveal it, and you're like, oh, I already, you know, I already got the three hearts. You can keep revealing the rest of them to try and get rid of them. Um, and that would also be useful if you're, you know, playing against... Um, yeah, that's, that's any way you're good. You can kind of set your character up. Uh, then we have Sheila, who has take an improvised action card, take a long rest, minus one horror, plus two time, move one space, or double health. So it's kind of interesting. They're very close for what they both get to do. She has, um, they both have long rest, and they both have double heart and time, but yeah, one game's movement, one game's improvised, one game's planning. Interesting. All right, uh, Sheila's ultimate, alternate ability is gain two time instead of one when discarding action cards for face down time. So if you're someone that really likes to discard and you tend to do that a lot, Sheila might be a great person for you. Give you even more options. Um, or if you're finding it like, I don't do it that often because it doesn't feel good. It, I, it doesn't seem to be that much of a benefit. Maybe this might get you into the habit of doing that um, because of that reason. Awesome. All right, let's hop in to our location. So we have Maple Lane. I'm going to back the camera up so we can get a better look at this. Uh, we have four item locations. North, West, Southwest, Northeast, and Southeast. So this map is, location is very different. So we have our compasses up there. So, like, usually, typically, there are, like, big giant circles and things are connected like that. It says an intersection in the middle. Um, that goes down each of the four streets. Um, but what makes it unique is that we do have four exits to the one each side, which is one more than usual. Uh, but we also have the house icon for, um, so you can count, so you can search every single house for an item. So this is really neat. Because every house potentially. But what makes this really tricky. Is none of the houses are connected. So if you want to go to this house. You have to go up into this one. And then if you want to go over to this house. Now you have to leave. Come all the way back down. Run this way. Go back up into that one. So each one you have to run to a different side. Um, so then you get to those two from there. This one from this side but then these two are three are on this side but then yeah like a couple down here uh but yeah you gotta run all the way around which is very interesting so it's gonna be a very interesting map as well uh and then we have the boyfriend's house and the smallies house so we only have the three different name locations um all right so what is maple lane 
uh, going to do for us. So we have Maple Lane runs through typical American suburb neighborhood in the quaint town of Spring Hill. Maple Lane was a street like any other, at least until someone got murdered. Now the residents are fearful of outsiders and wary of each other. That doesn't stop them from gathering for holidays and letting their children play in the streets. They may <laughs> they may soon regret having such false sense of security. They don't trust each other, but hey, you let your kids play in the streets. Um, Texas made me laugh, I'm sorry. Um, all right, special setup. There are four item decks for Maple Lane. Form the decks of the following normal rules, except make four decks of three cards each instead. So you still have 12 cards, just one less item. The top item of each card is revealed as normal. There's one deck for each quadrant. Include both convinced action cards in the action tableau. So we'll see what that does in a moment. Let's finish looking at rules. Um, street spaces. The normal and door spaces are all considered street spaces as well as the intersection space. There are no special rules for these, but some cards may refer to them. House spaces and quadrants. The house spaces are a new type of space in a Maple Lane location board. They are located in one of the four quadrants. Each quadrant has three houses for a total of 12. Each house may, only, may be searched and counts as an item space. They are both colored orange to remind you of this. Again, iconography is really good. Uh, when a house is successfully searched, draw the item card from the, from the deck for the house quadrant. Then place an X token on the house you search and may no longer be searched. So, we get 12 X tokens. So you can search one house. You can find an item for each house, but that means you get to one location. Now you have to move around to a different house to search a second time. Uh, when the search is yield multiple items, choose one you want, place the other on top of the quadrant stack face up, or on bottom face down as normal. In the rare event, an item needs to be added to an item deck, but all the house quantities have been searched. Every house has an X. Add to the qu closest quadrant that hasn't been fully searched. Um, interesting. So, for some reason, it w you have a thing that would say, um, like, this item came into play. Add it to, like, this location. Then you'd have to just put it wherever closest location is available. Um, since the resident of Maple Lane are so suspicious, you cannot enter occupied houses. This is a neat thing about this. One or more victims in the with one or more victims in the house, using walk, sprint, or any other card that allows movement. Uh, they'll have to be convinced to let you in their houses. See below. Panicking victims and enemies are not restricted. They may move into an occupied house freely. Uh, the house is unoccupied. No movement rules apply. You can enter and exit. So, if there are victims in the house, which you'd like to probably get and save, uh, you have to. Use the convince action card to enter. Otherwise, you can go through it, but also limits what houses you can get for items. There's a new action card card called card called convince only used when playing Maple Lane. To enter an occupied house from the adjacent street space, you must successfully convince your neighbor to let you in using the convince action card. Convince cards can only be used to enter occupied houses. Schedule the house, whether it's occupied or not, simply use normal movement. Convinced cards have an additional success line for when you get three or more successes on a horror roll. Cool. So let's take a look at those. We're going to get two copies of them. They're going to have one time for purchasing. It says, please let me in. I don't want to die out here. So if you get three successes, it says enter the adjacent house. You may take the top item. If you do, mark the house with an X token. Um... Just kind of neat. So you can get in there, they're going to give you an item to maybe help. Oh, we got to help protect yourself. Uh, if you get two, you just get to enter the house, which now you can do a regular search action. One success, you enter the adjacent house, but you lose time. So they're going to let you in, but maybe you spent a lot of extra time convincing them. Um, if you get no successes, you still get to enter the house, but you take damage and your turn. So maybe you forced your way in. Or alternatively, immediately return this card to the action table and lose one time. So if you can't afford to lose house, uh, if you get no successes, you can opt to just at least lose one time and not have to take damage. But then you're also not in the house. So that's pretty cool. All right, let's look at some of our little decks here. We have our setup decks. So we're going to get a quiet place. As you start there, so as you can enter straight down into this house here, 
But yeah, to kind of get to the other ones, we're going to have to start moving around. The block party. Oh, everyone starts kind of in the middle. Interesting. Um, we have Revenge. Uh, yeah, kind of spread a little bit more evenly. And you're at the Smalley's house. Your boyfriend's up at their house, possibly. Uh, playtime. Neat. That's an interesting setup there as well. And then finally, Maple Lane. Uh, a little, kind of like keeping all even. Interesting. Um, all right. What do we have next? We have our event deck. The event deck here. We have the Smallies. A killer on the loose must be ma must just be Maple Lane gossip, unless you don't think. Uh, so these are the white and the orange meeples. Place two special victims in a smallest house. Each time one of the smallies is killed, plus one bloodlust. Cool. Uh, officer Cop, or Coop. If you are scared, I would be happy to escort you out of the area. So this will use the little cop car token. You should get a little cop car. Mm -hmm. And of course, I have the maple leaves on the back. Place a cop car token in the exit of your choice. Each upkeep move at one space towards the opposite exit. Victims in the space where your cop car will move with it are considered saved when they reach the exit. Um, move the cop car and discard card when it reaches the exit. Interesting. So there's what? One, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four. So there's four spaces. So you can have him start on one side. He'll just drive through town, pick people up. So this is kind of neat, because if you can plan it right, you can maybe get some people like out in the middle and he'll just pick up a couple. Um, yeah, that's kind of a neat little thing. Party in the burbs, grilling, chilling, and feel in good time feeling. Place four new victims on any house that contains at least one victim. If none do, place them in the intersection. It's the 4th of July. The show is about to start. Do you have our sparklers? Move all victims inside a house to the adjacent street space. Everyone goes, goes outside. The boyfriend, he's sort of clingy and always wants to talk. Place a special victim in the boyfriend's house. This is your boyfriend. <laughs> if the killer would target you, the killer instead targets the boyfriend. During the upkeep, move the boyfriend two spaces towards you, then the boyfriend's in a space, minus two time. Interesting. So it's kind of helpful because he'll distract the killer, but if he gets in your space, um, he's going to keep reducing your time by making your job, making your stuff harder. Uh, but at least the upside is he'll still keep attracting the victim. He'll still be a, a meat shield for you. What is going on over there? There's a lot of commotion on Maple Lane. I'm going to go see what's up. Place one new victim on each exit. Under construction, I guess the big pothole or something, and won't let anyone through till it's fixed. Roll a die and place a roadblock on the following exit. West, east, south, north, west, or east, north, or south. Victims may not be saved in that space. So we do have two different hazard tokens, so that I think the other one's used somewhere else. But that's kind of, it blocks off one of your exits. It'd be funny to get the cop car, and then you block off the exit, and now... Um, the cop car will still go to that space and leave. You just can't, um, you know, be discarded. You just can't just rescue any of the people. It's raining. Everyone get inside before you address. Panic victims in the intersection. Then move every victim that is on the street into its adjacent house. The fire. Uh, do you smell smoke? Roll a die and place a fire token in the boyfriend's house the smallest or the smallest house. Any victims in the house or the panic or the panic into the house are killed. Your enemies, you or your enemies in the house take one damage, the house may only be searched. Cool, we got a little fire token for that. Um, and so it's gonna stay on fire, so you set it on fire so anyone that panics into that house later on could eventually die because they're an idiot and they ran into a flaming house. Uh, and then friendly neighbors. We're all families here on Maple Lane. Roll plus one die when resolving convince action cards. Oh, I like that. I like, this, I like when they do positive ones as well. Alright, then we have our item deck. What do we got for item? We have a megaphone. Hey you, go that way. No, not that way. The other way. <laughs> I don't know if that's supposed to be a cheer or 
exactly. Uh, SHX, so something high school, which Maple Link, oh, it's because it, it's uh, um, Spring Hills, so Spring Hills School, maybe. Uh, once per action phase, you may move one victim on the board one space, and then they're going to target you because you're shouting through a megaphone. <laughs> odds and ends. We have three tokens for those. Uh, so the odds and ends say, I can, run into, I can run a line to here. It will trigger this, and then this will slam into this. We have three uses of this. If you're in a house, you may place a booby trap token on it. Once per house. If an enemy moves into the house, discard the token and enemy takes two damage. Interesting. So, it's just kind of interesting for this game mode because that means even though technically Dr. Freight, you know, the question is, can he be hurt by this? You can't attack him unless you're asleep. Um, so, can you technically booby trap a house that you walk into or do you have to be asleep for that to trigger? That's an interesting conundrum. The Crucifix. Hey, shut up. It works in the movies. Discard not any horror level th level increase or any enemy's movement when they're in adjacent space. And we got three of those. We have a pitchfork. It was doing a pinch. That would have sounded so much cooler if it was called a pinchfork. Um, Zero range, uh, so melee, but it does one damage. Just for any time, prevent damage from a single attack. The machete. Who's the killer now? It does double damage. Victims will not follow you while the machete is in your hand. I probably wouldn't either. The rifle. If this can't kill it, what will? One to three range, double damage, and two uses. Rifle cannot modify an action card. It must be used without one. Spend... Uh, time to make a horror roll. Success. Deal. Uh, two damage to one enemy on the streets. Within range. Cool. Yeah, roll such a gamble on it. Interesting. Lucky guy. Oh, these are going in my car if I survive. Discard to re-roll any or all your dice. Energy drinks. Energy drinks will kill you. Yeah, I think I'll take my chances. Discard is during action phase and choose one of the following. Add three time or move one space. Crash can like these aren't exact actually these aren't exactly actual shields lying around in the neighborhood. It's better than nothing. Three uses and ignores the damage. The knife. It's better than trying to punch it. Barely. Does one damage. The Bible. I'll just appeal to the religious side. Surely they'll let me in. Plus two action, or dice when resolving a convince action. The fireworks. We got a firework token there. Uh, ripper in a box. Uh, I could be an, it could be a nice distraction. Wish they were a little bigger though. Spend two time to place firework token in your space or adjacent space. Not in a house. Never a killer must choose a car, they'll choose fireworks instead. Discard firework token when the killer enters the space is located. The archery bow, I'm not on Amazon, but I play one in this mo in this movie. This is a movie, right? No? Oh damn. <laughs> uh one to two range, three uses. Archery bow cannot modify action card must be all one spent two time to fire an arrow in this street. And then our last one is the bicycle. Hi, whole silver away. We get a yellow bicycle car token there. Um, which will, uh, takes two hands to ride it. Which is when you take this car, place a bicycle token in the street space adjacent to you. If you do not have any items in your hand, you are, and you are with the bicycle, you can move yourself into any other street space on the board. Uh, cool. Uh, yeah, so it just helps you be able to move around the board a lot quicker. You could park it at one side in front of a house and then quickly run to another part of the house, town. Um, that's kind of fun. Awesome. All right. Then we have our terror cards. They just got hit by a car. If there are no victims in the street, discard and join our terror. Otherwise, one victim in the street space is killed. Target a victim moving attack. It's too quiet. Horror, and then target the final girl move twice. If the killer's in the same space, who's another horror? The road closed for construction. Place a robot token on the exit closest to you. Victim can have to be saved. Draw another event card. 
It came right through the yard. Target one, move attack. If the killer is in a house, move it to any other house in the quadrant with a victim. Oh, neat. Uh, target one, move an attack, and place another event. They told us to hide. Place horror, gain a horror, then place one new victim in each house that is not connected to an exit and draw another event. I love getting to do all these extra events. Because uh, there's some really neat cards, and being able to shuffle through them more is really fun. I said don't look back. If there are no exits that have at least one victim, discard and draw the next terror card. Otherwise, place the killer in any space that has on any exit that has at least one victim. Uh I'm probably just waiting for him to panic to that area. Um target one in attack. You're happening on Maple Lane. Play an event, then play another event, then draw the next terror card. And the final one is we are all gonna die. Choose a victim, moving attack. Choose a victim, moving attack. If no victims were killed, up the bloodlust by two. Cool. Um, yes, these are very neat, uh, neat character and location. So yeah, the whole boiler room aspect, not being able to attack, attack the guy, is going to make for interesting gameplay for fighting Dr. Fright. Because uh, you, got, you, got, you have to worry about taking damage from him. That's, you can probably block it. But it's still, it's not just I have to avoid where he's at on the map. You also have to watch it when every time you go to sleep to try and attack him. You have to, but then while you're asleep, you only have a minimum of four turns to be able to attack him. So you can't spend a lot of time, like, you almost want to try and fall asleep when you're, like, in a space near here or next to him. So that way you can move right away and attack him. And then maybe try and exit the boiler room right away so that he can't hurt you. So it's kind of that gamble, like... Avoid the damage in the boiler room while trying to get close enough to attack him when you fall asleep, but then maybe get get to the boiler room quick enough that he doesn't attack you right back. So it's just a little cat and mousey type game. Uh, and then Maple Lane is very interesting where you have to try and convince your way into houses, adds a new element to be able to get in and do stuff. Um, and then you also got to decide, do you buy a convince card and hope for a three success? Or do you just try and get in there and you buy search cards? Because the thing is, if you don't have a search card on you, you know, then you're spending extra... Um, you're spending an extra action having to purchase one and sit in the house even longer. Um, although you can always discard it. And again, if your horror level gets too low, you get down to like one horror, you're just never going to be able to get that triple star. All right. So now we're going to go into spoiler territory. We're going to look at these cards. So if you do not want to see these, this is why I will thank you for watching the video. Hope you guys are enjoying any of these Final Girl videos. If you have questions, comments, hit me up. I'll try and answer or show you something extra if you'd like to see it. Um, check out the other Final Girl videos. I also check out my other channel where I do starting to do gameplay videos. I'm going to try and upload games of the Final Girl being played as well as other board and video games. Um... All right, so if, yeah, you don't want to see these, I will check you out in the next video. Otherwise, let's hop in and see what these special items are. So how these work is very interesting. So we have Nancy's Machete. So basically how these work is you take these items, you're only supposed to use them after you successfully won a match with them. Then they unlock the weapon. Then they can be added any other time you play as a killer. They're only supposed to be used, uh, sorry, as you play as the... Final Girl. They're only supposed to be used for that particular Final Girl. Um, so if you be with Nancy, you want to play on a different mission, you can, or scenario, you shuffle these into the item deck, and then you draw them like normal. Um, if you want to make sure you get it, if the deck has 12 cards, you can pull one, shuffle that into the 12, 11 cards and make a 12 card deck. Now you guarantee that it's in one of the three item decks, or four item decks, for like the case of Maple Lane. Um... So you can just shuffle it into the full deck and you may or may not have it, or you can guarantee it's in one of those decks. Um, so that's what we got. Now, ultimately the rule is going to be, can I use this with anybody else? Can I use this in, in any game mode? Can I just can I shuffle multiple together? Your game, do what you want. It's a solo game. You're not competing against anybody else. So if you're adding these into other decks or giving to other people, all you're doing is changing your own rules or making the game potentially easier for yourself. That's entirely up to you. Alright, so what does Nancy's Machetes do? So usually the, these are all just upgraded versions of the regular weapons. So her says, if you can't beat them, join them, 
then beat him. So this machete does three damage. Victims do not follow you when you enter the killer space. Gain a blood loss. Only Nancy may use this item. Interesting. So yeah, the uh, regular machete uses one hand. This will use two. Has double damage. Has three. Um, but you also are going to gain blood loss. So you're basically becoming. So you're becoming a little bit more of a killer yourself. Uh, at the sacrifice mode to take them out. Um, so nobody wants to work with you have less hands. So very interesting. Then we have Sheila's weapon or item. I don't want to say weapon, it's not always, but it is. It's a knife. And she gets it. I don't know if they changed the artwork on some of these. So she just has a regular knife. Um, it doesn't look like much, but trust me, it is. Plus one die while attacking with Sheila's knife. Yeah, so then the regular knife is just same thing just now she gets some extra damage again you could always if you opt to you could mix and match these with other other characters and other things like that make the game a little bit more interesting um but yeah if you, let's say if you swap this out for the other knife it's just gonna make your game easier every time you get one if you only put one in the deck which is ideally what it's supposed to do uh, you have a potential one in 12 chance of getting a little bit better weapon uh, with all saying you're like, I'm going to replace each version of the thing. So I'm going to replace the machete with uh, Nancy's knife with Sheila's knife. And you have to get like, a bow from a different person and replace that. And you keep replacing each one. Uh, every item is that much better. You have the rifle replaced and this replaced. Um, you do that in every game. Every game is going to be a lot easier. But if you're struggling to win, maybe that's what you do. So that way you can still enjoy the rest of the game without making the game... Uh, change any of the rules because even though you can have this if you miss die rolls or you don't find the item the game hasn't changed at all or it hasn't gotten any easier so that is cool there all right that is a final girl for everybody hope you guys enjoyed this again hit me up in the comments check out my other videos and channels see you guys later bye